hearing all of these stories of transformation from psychedelics, a lot of people wonder, is this going to work for me? It kind of can seem a little too good to be true. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how to create the best results with psychedelics. There are some very specific things that make a huge, huge, huge difference. Now, the first thing I want to say is these aren't rules. There are miracles all the time. The most amazing things happen. What is for sure is that after a big journey, it is up to us the impact of that journey on our lives. Most of the people that I facilitate have life-changing journeys. The question is, what do they put in practice in their life to continue to run that energy? Because it's not about the medicine. The medicine is opening us up to new parts of ourselves. New things to see, feel, experience. And we have to keep those parts alive. There's no substitute for that. And our culture is designed and we are raised in such a way that there's a lot of pressure on us not to let go of those things. Whether that's relationships, family expectations, perceived financial constraints, a so-called rational need to explain things. These can all be limitations if they're not in alignment. And it can be quite challenging to allow ourselves to step out of them and know that even though I've changed the way I think, I'm still intelligent and I still care about science. And even though I don't do everything that I've habitually done for my family, I still love them. These are the uh, shifts that the medicine calls us into. So the first thing that helps you create shifts when you work with psychedelics is intention. And I've spoken a lot about this. I'll continue to speak a lot about this. It can be almost anything, but it focuses us because we approach the medicine and the medicine meets us. So the stronger, deeper, bolder the intention, the more room the medicine has to meet us. When creating intentions, connect with the desires of your heart. Like, what do you really want? And they're about an energetic. They're a feeling you want to embody. I am at peace. I am relaxed. I love myself. These types of intentions. And of course, there's so many more possibilities. I have an episode just on that just on intention setting. The second thing to creating great results in psychedelics is unwavering commitment to the process. One of the things I noticed when I was working with ayahuasca was there was a lot of talk the next day. What did you get? What did you get? What did you see? What happened? And a kind of trying to decode it And I didn't think it was super helpful because intuitively I understood that these medicines are working beyond language on us and they need space to unfold. And to the extent that we decide that we're going to meet them and be an active part of the integration process and really honor what we're hearing and honor ourselves, that's how the the shifts can really happen. But if we're just trying to extract the value in our minds, we, we miss a piece of the puzzle. I also have had the experience over and over again that when we take action, then the medicine responds. Because it's us. It's not actually the medicine. It is. The medicine opens things, relates to us, but it's us. So for example, I was asked to do a woman's circle ceremony and it was the first kind of public psychedelic offering I was doing. And I did it. And then the medicine taught me a lot of things about how to create that. And I learned from it. 
And then more people were asking. So I stepped more into that. And so I grew as I took action and the energetics that had been opened by the medicine, they came to meet me. So over time, I have grown into someone who holds a lot more space and has a lot more available in my body. But it's not like I got it and I felt, oh, I can hold all this space and I can work with people transformationally with the medicine and I know how to do it. Let's do it. It was one step at a time. I would take an action and grow and I was supported in growing. So my action was was an integral part of my growth. So the commitment to the process of doing what we're called to do next is, is huge. How we approach the medicine. This is big, big, big. Again, not a magic pill. And it's never what we expect. And that's the only thing I know for sure. Our journeys are never what we expect. So an attitude of openness, of gratitude, of curiosity, this is what creates the shifts. I'm thinking of a client whose intention was about letting go into possibility. She was so excited. I think it was, it was letting go into joy. And she started her microdosing. And she started crying a lot. And she could have been, why am I crying? I want joy. But she wasn't. She was open, curious, even grateful. And she could sense in her body that this was part of the letting go into joy. We have to be willing to go on that unexpected journey. That we don't just get to order off a menu this emotion. That they all open up and they're all part of it. And how could we possibly experience joy if we can't also cry? How can we love if we can't also lose? It's not possible. It's all wrapped up together and the opening opens all of it. Another thing that's really key to getting great results with psychedelics is ongoing personal work. It can take so many different forms. I have very structured transformational programs for both microdosing expand and macrodosing empower. But there are so many ways you can do this with therapy, with your own personal routines, with nature, um, with energy work, with yoga. The, the possibilities are truly endless. The key is that you're releasing what you no longer need. You're connecting to who you really are and you're amplifying that connection. You're feeling your feelings. You're grounding into your body, into the earth. And you're dealing with, acknowledging, allowing whatever is true for you in the moment. All of this deep personal work keeps the energy moving that the medicine started moving. And I often see, and one of the reasons I rarely do weekend retreats anymore, is because they are magical, amazing shifts. We do the full preparation, facilitation, integration. Oh my gosh, by the end, it's just fantabulous. And a month later, almost everybody is in a form of back where they were some more than others, because we have to make the changes and it's much easier for us to make changes when we're supported in an ongoing container. So it's about keeping that energy moving that the medicine got moving. So you want your support to really understand that, understand your intention, understand the size of the shift, understand what you need. And then the personal work, it's not doing all the things not at all. It's doing the one next best thing. And the way I've worked with this is I've created an awareness tool that looks at lots of different aspects of the person and sees where's the juice, like what is the practice or focus of attention that will give the person the most energy gain right now. So that's one way of knowing what is the one next thing. You, see, you don't have to do all the things. You don't have to do all. And sometimes the next thing is uh, strength training. Sometimes it's sexy dancing. Sometimes it's a challenging conversation. It can take millions of different forms. The question is just what's next? How am I in this moment and what do I need next? The final piece 
that's really important for getting results, and I have talked about this already in this episode, is taking action. We tend to be really afraid to take action. What if we get it wrong? And the medicine will help you loosen the attachments to right and wrong and help you understand that it's all a play, it's all a flow, it's all a dance. And taking action really keeps the energy moving. The medicine wants us to feel alive. We want to feel alive. And the medicine really supports that desire for life force energy. So to make shifts in our life, like to sign up for that dance class, to put a boundary in a relationship, to take time for lovemaking, all of these things are like very important pieces of the results you're looking for. We meet the medicine and the medicine meets us. I'm thinking of one example of someone whose sexuality was woken up by the medicine and she, with so much love, created a kind of ultimatum in her sexless marriage that said, you know, I cannot continue unless we work on our sex life. That's the type of action that keeps the sexual energy alive and honors you. And it's the type of action that takes a ton of courage. Another example of action is visibility in your business, of getting out there. Again, it's messy. It's never perfect. It's hard. It takes courage and it keeps that moving. And that's where things start to get really juicy in your life is when you start to take those steps that aren't certain. So in summary, our results are co-created with the medicine. So we're, we are a big part of the results, which is great news. We set an intention. We commit to the process, to seeing it through and knowing it's not just about the mind. We approach what happens in journeys and after with openness, curiosity, and gra- gratitude. We allow it to happen. We do ongoing personal work in all the areas, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. And we take action in our lives on behalf of the energy that the medicine is moving. This is when it gets really juicy and life can change dramatically in very short periods of time with a lot of beauty. Ways that sometimes we're taught things are going to be difficult and again, they don't have to be that sometimes change can happen with a lot of love. And the magic that can be created is overwhelming. All of this can happen when there's a partnership of the strong energy of the medicine with the desires of our hearts. It's truly a beautiful love story. If this episode of Aliveness resonated with you, be sure to subscribe so you get all the juicy episodes to come. And if you have a friend who is deep into their personal growth and healing journey, share this podcast with them too. Now go out and experience the aliveness that's here for you today.